Hello everyone, happy to be here at the Spark in AI Summit. My name is Anurag Segal, and I run data analytics and machine learning and AI at Credit Suisse within the Global Markets Division. I'm here to talk about how data and digital are transforming all aspects of how we do business as a bank. We've gone from a traditional approach, a human-centric customer approach, uh, to a digitally connected client journey where digital solutions augment human expertise. There's an exponential demand for insights and data-driven answers from our clients. Our business models have gone from a predominantly bespoke and expert judgment-driven approach uh, to digital platforms that allow us to drive into new markets uh, or new routes to customers. The value proposition for our sales, trading, and research teams continues to evolve as well. Our, our trading teams are looking for uh, real-time intelligence on how to price, how to manage inventory, how to drive RFQs. Our sales teams are looking for insights in, uh, in what clients are interested in, what products they're interested in, what stocks they're interested in. And our research teams are looking to differentiate our, our content and our advice um, to clients uh, with data, data and uh, distinct and differentiated analytics. Data analytics is at the core of everything we're doing. We've gone from leveraging traditional financial market data, price data, to leveraging alternative forms, uh, nascent forms of data, in driving unique insights, intelligence, and recommendations for our clients. Data and AI machine learning are a core driver of how we evaluate where we go next. In order to achieve this transformation, our goal is to foster the generation of ideas, new ideas, in enhancing and growing our business with data analytics, allowing for experimentation, rapid prototyping, and having a VC mindset in leveraging and, and driving mature, commercially viable ideas into products uh, and business ventures. In being able to do that, we're setting up ideation events, forums where uh, ideas come to life, uh, be it shark tanks, hackathons, or design thinking workshops. Uh, in, in partnering with digital champions and digital advocates across all our businesses in rethinking, reimagining our business uh, and business process and, and how we deliver most value to our clients. We're looking at how we go from ideas to pilots, prototypes, to minimum viable products uh, and having a clear digital product strategy and how we go to market. This wouldn't be possible if we weren't prioritizing our idea funnel uh, with a very clear um, you know, mindset of looking at ideas that are most viable and most uh, critical for us to take our business forward. None of this would be possible without uh, having a core foundational platform that allows us to drive rapid prototyping, rapid ideation, experimentation, and take the ideas that are, that are most commercially viable to that uh, scale out mode. So what does our core foundational platform look like? Well. Our goal is to look at large amounts of both internal and external data in ingesting large amounts of data onto our platform in looking at not only structured data but unstructured data in looking at all kinds of real-time streaming data. And so the forms and types of data that we're ingesting into our platform continues to evolve. Uh, we are, we've set up a metadata-driven data ingestion framework that allows us to go from defined metadata to ingesting data, to enriching those metadata sets, to being able to look at quality monitoring of our, of our data. Uh, and so data quality plays a key role in, 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 the, in the consumption of this data, in, in consumers gaining confidence on the platform and on the data that they're using. We're using anomaly detection to be able to look at data quality in very different ways. Uh, analytics is a core part of the foundation. Uh, machine learning and AI uh, is, is a core part of how we achieve success. With the growth and, and in the use of machine learning, our goal is to democratize the use of machine learning and AI. So the way we're achieving that is through machine learning sandboxes in sandbox environments that allow our data scientists um, to be able to develop, deploy, and test models rapidly. Uh, in being able to look at derived trading signals and factors uh, that, that can be derived from the underlying uh, raw and enriched data. Uh, in recommendation engines and NLP engines that allow us to very quickly uh, consume unstructured forms of data and, and create uh, insight from it. 
Uh, obviously, part of this ecosystem includes the ability to uh, you know, have that life cycle management in, in models and in algorithms that we develop on the platform. The insights from these algorithms and, and the data insights that we're driving is delivered to uh, our clients, to all our internal personas through various different channels. Um, one of the key channels is, is through the visualization and, and reporting and business intelligence layer, uh, but we deliver insight to our end users where they need it at the moment and point they need it at. Um, so for our clients, it's through our client portals, through APIs. For our sales and trading teams, it is uh, through our sales trading desktops uh, at the point where they're making decisions on RFQs, or on IOIs, on uh, any access. Uh, and APIs play a key role in, in the sort of flexibility that the platform provides us. As we embarked on the platform, we needed to set some core design principles, some core architecture principles in what uh, would drive uh, the success uh, for us in the short, mid, mid and long term. Being on the public cloud was of utmost importance to us. Having platform as a service capabilities uh, that provide, you know, uh, multi-cloud enablement that provide for cloud agnostic capabilities uh, was critical to us. The ability to scale up and scale down is something that we did not have on-premise and, and the ability to automatically provision infrastructure on the cloud uh, was, it was a key feature we needed. Um, Next-gen technologies for machine learning AI uh, and, and a consistent user experience for our data scientists, our data engineers, our business analysts uh, was a key part of the principles we set ourselves up with. Databricks and uh, MLflow are key tenants of, of how we achieve these, uh, these capabilities on the cloud. Data security, uh, being, you know, being co co comfortable with putting confidential data on the cloud was a journey for us. Uh, providing for efficiency in how we deliver uh, and, and what we deliver, um, you know, with CI/CD, with continuous, uh, you know, continuous improvement, with uh, integration, with sprint-based uh, deliveries, with agile capabilities, uh, was was a big part of our core principles. As I mentioned, machine learning and data mining uh, was a key focus for us uh, in in this journey, and and so the types of things we're doing around machine learning and AI uh, include, you know within natural language processing, include tonality and sentiment analysis, topic detection, event detection, uh, and, and text summarization. Uh, graph analytics and pattern mining is extremely important to us from, a, you know, from evaluating strongly connected entities to looking at sequence of events, to look at community, of, um, community detection. Predictive analytics uh, was, was important in areas around anomaly detection of, of, of market data to recommendation engines for sales, uh, to pricing and fundamental analysis for our trading teams and our quant teams. To achieve this, we very early set out to uh, you know, create a sandbox environment for data scientists to be able to very quickly um, you know, enable a sandbox with, with all kinds of open source libraries, open source machine learning libraries um, you know, that, that allowed them to develop and deploy models fairly quickly. Uh, so we created an NLP image and a quant predictive image uh, that allowed for us to fairly quickly take all kinds of new machine learning libraries and, and put them into the hands of our data scientists uh, on this cloud environment. Obviously, with you know, these images and these, uh, these, these sandbox environments are, are, are key for, for data scientists, but uh, you know, the development environment for models, the deployment uh, you know, and lifecycle management of models uh, was as critical a feature in this in this process, and so you know, for a data scientist to develop models, uh, their their IDE environment was uh, was the Databricks notebook. Uh, for a data scientist to deploy and test these models, uh, you know, we allow for compute capabilities both on scale out and scale up modes. Uh, so scale out using Spark and scale up using um, you know dynamic GPU cluster management. Uh, to manage the model lifecycle, uh, you know, we use MLflow, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, model lifecycle management and our approach to model lifecycle management. Uh, but also to be able to visualize uh, the, the results and the outcomes from these models, our data scientists use all kinds of capabilities, um, you know, from Databricks to Tableau to, um, you know, to other features uh, and other visualization libraries. So as I mentioned, model, uh, machine learning and AI model lifecycle uh, management uh, is, is critical to us. And uh, 
you know, our approach to machine learning model lifecycle management is very similar to all other models we run for, uh, you know, in, in risk or in, uh, in our trading, uh, trading systems. And so model registry and versioning of all our models, but, uh, you know, essentially includes uh, aspects of all aspects of data, all aspects of model code, uh, logging and versioning of parameters and hyperparameters, uh, versioning of taxonomy used in a model, corpuses used in a model, uh, validation and monitoring metrics used by a model. Um, all of that is, is controlled, is registered, is version controlled uh, through this life cycle. Here are three case studies and examples of how the platform is starting to create value for our business. We're seeing recommendation engines deliver personalized recommendations to our sales teams around products our clients are interested in based on a variety of signals and, and data sets. We're using alternative data insights in unique ways uh, to measure company performance, to look at sector performance, uh, to look at macroeconomic views, uh, as an example, to look at economic recovery from, uh, from COVID-19, uh, look at trends uh, in, in the ESG space, uh, and enhance our products uh, with differentiated alternative data insights. We're starting to look at digital platforms and the use of digital platforms that is uh, allowing us to expand product coverage and distribution capabilities to offer unique new products and services uh, and reduce operational friction and create efficiency um, in our business process. So as we look to the future, um, our goal is to continue to enable both offense and defense value cases in how we empower our business with state-of-the-art digital capabilities and data-driven intelligence to both enhance our core products, but also offer new products uh, and look at how we can drive, continue to drive efficiency and, and growth, um, you know, leveraging, uh, leveraging data and digital. Platform-based solutions, um, you know, as we look to embark on network effects and, and you know, gain the value of platform, uh, we want these network effects to continue to play out. We want to leverage digital platforms to create new markets and new routes to customers uh, and deploy more and more product uh, via digital platforms. And lastly, we want to continue to turbocharge data analytics, embedding machine learning and AI in all aspects of, uh, of how we do business uh, in creating value for our clients as well as for our internal sales trading and research teams. I'd like to thank you all for joining me at the Spark and AI Summit today. I hope you found my presentation useful and informative. Thank you.